All right, I guess ambush traits are useless because we banned ambushing that game? shot. <laughs> Lizardman. <laughs> oh, she was, right, she, Gorok, right. Yeah, she was playing Gorok. <laughs> and had plagues Russian. all the time. Yeah, I had to deal with... I, I need uh, to get to Katie this playing the to rat reduce upkeep shots. Starting out right next to, to me, so I was playing as Gorok and dealing with rat plagues like the first 10 turns in. Hmm. Uh, Jackal says, I totally missed it. Did the voice icons no longer work or are they removed? The voice icons? Oh, wait. I don't know. What happened? Oh, there we go. Now, I'm glad you said something. I must have changed scenes. Oh, it was when I was showing to Manson's Discord pictures. I changed the scene. All right. Uh, it's to Manson's You want to get some free money? Uh, the boat battle? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Let me move my camera. That's where it put me. Am I in range? That's where it put me. Am I in range? You are. I'm down to auto at you. Yeah, I hit auto. Cool. He seduces your units anyway. Oops. <laughs> hey, no, I did say last night I'm giving that up. <laughs> Dude, considering he was spell? on my side for that battle, that would have been especially salt in the wound. That would have been so good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go hunt him down. Can you get there now? Was that to me? Yeah. Um, I used all my movement getting in the water. Okay. Yeah, somehow a singular unit of his escaped. Yeah. And I want that, so... I want that, he says. I think I asked this last game, but I forgot the answer. Is there any way of playing this where you and your ally has have vision of each other's stuff, like shared vision? Yeah, declare uh, military. Yeah, it's it's make an alliance, and also um, you can at the beginning uh, instead of like because technically this is a free for all that allows you to make and break alliances at will. Uh, we just verbally agreed to teams, but you can hard lock the teams at the start, and it would give you vision from turn one. But normally, the way that I do it is leave it set to free-for-all like this so you can decide what kind of agreements you want to make with your team. We're just kind of in a unique spot where you and I can't ally because we've been set against each other on purpose. I'm curious if um, turning on the team thing before we would have started would have uh, been the way around that mechanic. Uh, it might have. I probably still wouldn't have done it. Because, or like I wouldn't have wanted to do it because it would have, uh, yeah, more like, it, it would have Taking tanked my diplomacy with like everyone and everything nearby. Then you wouldn't have gotten all your care packages from the Empire. I would still get those because those are just tied to me winning battles and filling a meter. Uh -huh. But it would make it harder for me to sign trade agreements and stuff. Me seeing my army of seven can auto win this and breathing a sigh of relief. Mm. That's really weird. I so I landed on the shoreline um, over here. Um, forgive me, south of Bretonia, and uh, on the last turn. And the settlement I immediately took, like, it, it just had the Occupy button. There was no fight or anything, but I immediately occupied it, but I took it from uh, the elves. Uh, if they if they have colonized it, but not upgraded it to level one, that's how it happens. Hold on, I wasn't done. So after that, on the next turn, my guy was just sitting there, and then um, the elf guy that's like a satyr, the one that wants to be at war with everybody, 
I forget his name. Orion. Orion. He just run, ran in and just smashed into my army. And it was just like an overwhelming victory for me. And I was just like, what are you doing? And he just suicided huh? in. And that, so I, I got a little bit of money from that. You love to see it. So if I mouse over, okay, we were, we were talking earlier about what was ruins and what wasn't really ruins. If I mouse over ruins that have Skaven corruption, but it says colonization cost on it. It is still likely a hidden Skaven. What I'm saying is, is that one that you have to build up from rubble? You if it says no colonization cost. You don't know. You don't know, okay. The, the seeing the Skaven corruption is kind of a a cheese thing that you could see it even though you can't know that there are Skaven there. You can cheese it even harder if you really want to tell if it's Skaven occupied. Uh, by highlighting your army as, and as if you were about to make a move order, you position your cursor right near the city. And if it doesn't let you stand directly adjacent to the city, like there's a red sphere of influence blocking you, then that indicates that there are still Skaven there. Yeah, you we must be at war though for that to work. Would you be so kind as to ping the line of how far north I am allowed or, you know, not allowed to cross? You cannot go any more north than Billy Bolly, you, or east of Billy Bolly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Castle Carcassonne there is officially in return. All right. I yeah, don't there's, remember um... going to war with those guys, but they hate me for whatever reason. Yeah, they just hate you because you're a lizard. Racist. I think... I think the line separating the um, two provinces is like right here, I think, is the border of Britannia. Yeah, I think so. That seems right. Be right back, just a second. Chat, I'm telling the boy goodnight. I'll be right back. And the sack value of that forest, though, by Batonia is getting up there. Okay, back. Press space to see borders. I mean, this doesn't have the words Bretonia, so this doesn't really tell me. Interesting, though. Night. Did you just attack Scrag? Hey, goddamn right I did. It's an over <laughs> over world. I figured you'd be trying to confederate him or something. Ooh, Chat, I'm unsure. My, negative 167 chance to confederate. They're like, come on, bro. You're just like, get in my belly. This is how we do diplomacy here. No, there's no, like, he, he's strength rank. What strength rank is he now? He's strength rank. He's 18 now. But I mean, like, I, I checked and it was minus 167 to confed him. So. <laughs> I've never had a campaign where he's done that well. I wish I could Me undo that move. I actually regret that. I've never even done that well. Like, especially this early, like, late fire. game. I was, I was tempted, especially what we were I was talking about tempted before, to just hit this and back off. I don't know 46, if she would come down and hit me that. that well. He's gaming, that's for sure. Yup. It makes me wonder, like, who was losing so bad over there that he's doing that well. Probably Clan Angrind or something, like one of the this factions that he normally has to fight early on. Yeah. Actually, do either of them? I don't think either of them do. Yeah, I don't think either of them do. They just have replenishment. Zula. 
We do have a Regiment of Renowned Feral Carnosaur. That's a surprise tool that could help us later, chat. We've got an angry Tyrannosaurus Rex on emergency hiring. Hmm. I'm trying to get all of the cheap economy buildings I can get. Uh, let's see. Sailor says, if I can ask you a question about Guild Wars 3, dear Mr. Muggle, dear Mr. Muggle. Hey, Sailor. First of all, I want to say you are always welcome to ask me questions. A lot of people come here with questions about Guild Wars 2 stuff because I cover a lot of uh, Guild Wars 2 things. I play a lot the of different games, so six to six nights a week, I'm here streaming other things, and then one night a week, I'm usually streaming Guild Wars 2. You are always welcome to come in and hang out and ask questions about anything, because uh, I am a weirdo who streams seven days a week. Um, as far as your question, do you think Guild Wars 3, which is confirmed, it is not, will have the build and classes from Guild Wars 1? That is what many people ask for and what you would do with the system of Guild Wars 2. If you had two games in the same community, you would try each other out. To be honest, I want to see Eve again. Did I just see my DM? Um... Yes, I see that. It'll take me a couple of turns, there but I can, I can do that. There is not confirmation yeah. about Guild Wars 3. There was a mistranslation from something that was said in Korean at a shareholders meeting that made a lot of people go crazy thinking Guild Wars 3 was going to happen. But I don't believe there is confirmation that that is going to happen. Uh, so that that's kind of the issue there. Um, so at the, Now, if it's going to happen, considering they haven't even announced it, yeah, it's like, could it happen? Yes. Is it confirmed? No. Uh, my turn's done, but I'm gonna be our because I have to use the restroom. I, I just, I want to phrase that very carefully. Where is the movement, hero? Hold on. Don't forget to check your diplomacy. <laughs> oh, God. I think they'll laugh at this, so I'll say it. Hey, uh, good news, because uh, I've you know, been having all these mobility issues. Uh, if I finally hit tier mm -hmm. four, I can have a mobility hero in 11 turns. Very nice. Just in time. Hopefully he's mobile enough to fly to Britonia. This is when you hear the sound of a gunshot going off. <laughs> <laughs> well, take a look at your diplomacy and tell me about that gunshot. Unless it's buying more turns, I don't think it's gonna help. <laughs> Thank you. I have been going around all of my lovely ruins and uh, building them up to tier one with the money you've been sending me. Shh, it's a secret. The other team doesn't know. It is not a secret. Shut up. Because no you idea. put the message in the wrong chat, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know which <laughs> message you're referring to. Mm -hmm. No one would be so silly to message the wrong chat. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> Tracker of distinction. I'm I eyeing these temple fly. guards because Mazda Mundi gets half upkeep on temple guards and wondering if that would be a good band-aid. I mean, frankly, temple guards are a good thing for you to have regardless because you're playing against Slanesh who loves cavalry. Like flanking Cav and whatnot. Uh, temple guards shut that crap down hard. I'm, I'm looking at tech right now because I just hit tier four this turn and I'm just deciding what to build that... Because, like, anything I start building now, I'm going to barely have in time for Britonia. And I'm trying to Well, keep to in mind that Britonia... So, this is another thing to keep in mind. Britonia opens on turn 60, right? Yeah. But, um... 
it doesn't end until like turn 85. You have a you have a pretty wide window of time there. You don't need to show up right the second up, especially if Bombjus and I are already there to pose a threat and like keep the other team from completely rolling the whole area. Yeah. I do want to uh, say, um, I got no hatred for this guy I'm playing. If I had to do this again, and either A, I didn't have someone that I was forbidden from killing south of me, or B, we had the climate thing from you know the beginning, so that I could just shoot north, um, I think it would have been totally fine. Uh, that that's that just like that just led to the situation, you know. Like I I yeah. don't feel like now. Granted, you know I've got the new pair of eyes here, but I don't feel like this is bad. I don't hate playing this dude. Um, I think when you compare him to the other factions that we are currently playing in this campaign, he's not so bad. But I think if you go play a campaign as, say, mm, I don't know, uh, Ungram Iron Fist, and then go back and try playing Mazda Mundi, you will suddenly feel the culture shock difference of playing a really strong oh, yeah, faction. Oh like yeah, like even just like among the one. 10 factions I've played, this is not going to become a new favorite. I'm just saying I don't hate it. Hey, yep. you're already playing the Kai, so you know what like, the real Lizardman plays like. Yeah, well, the Kai, I mean, he got the mobility hero at tier three, and then hey, you're goddamn Oxy ready, dude. Oxytocin gets it at tier one. He starts with one. So, like, they're so much faster. Also, Nakai has a research that increases all his armies by 15%. So having the the uh, mobility hero at tier three plus that research, mm -hmm. it, he's able to move like how I see Slanesh moving brother. on the map right now. Preach it. So like, it's just right now, I, I'm pretty sure the distance I can move each turn with Mazda, my, my current Mazda Mundi is about between a third and half of what Slanesh can do each turn with one of his see. like fresh armies. See, Bomb, just I'm going to go ahead and point out that even like a brand new player immediately picks out how strong Nakai is and, and thus reinforces my decision to ban him. Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I, I will I'm, say I'm Nakai felt I'm like. I'm learning Nakai, it felt like the first 20 turns, I was like clawing tooth and nail for every bit of advantage I could get. But then after that, it started to like uh, gain momentum a lot. It, that's how it felt to me. Also, yeah, don't no forget. Uh, one of your Temple of the Old Ones buffs also gives you campaign movement range. You talking about my current hero or for Nakai? No, no, for Nakai. When you go back to oh, Nakai. Okay. I was looking around like, did I miss something? Don't worry, I'll join your chat and backseat later. <laughs> Sorry, I'm triple checking all my hobbles to see if there's anything else I can do this turn. I guess that's all I can do. I'm wondering, hmm, since you took care of those pirates, I wonder if I should disband that army to, that I have at the southeast. It's just like three regiments. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Not to brag or anything, but I just quadrupled my income. <laughs> it's honestly not a bad idea to do that as well, because if you do that now, you're putting them on the 10 turn cooldown, so you'll have them back before objective. True. Oh yeah, if you're gonna do it, now would be definitely be the time to do it. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. Mm -hmm. Uh, check DMs in a second, Muck. Done. I am There's sending nothing there. a screenshot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will not forsake my honor. Check DMs in 22 seconds, Muck. Yep. There's gonna be something there. Dude, that's me dealing with my kid. I'm like, just a second. He's like, time's up! <laughs> so I know you guys said with a military alliance you could share vision. Is it possible, like, with a mod or some other setting that, like, you could have shared vision of allies from just, like, the, the get-go, like, the beginning of the game? Or is that just not a thing with this? If you're on the same team, you get shared vision from the beginning of the game. Yeah, so it's just fully based off of how soon you ally. Yeah, so if you do a co-op campaign and you, you're both on the same team, it automatically locks you into a military alliance starting on turn one. Now, when you say so same you, team, do you mean like lizard men? No, no, so so in, in, the, in like the actual multiplayer lobby, you can click a little plus sign that puts you on team one, and other people can click that plus sign and also be on team one. And we did not do right. that. No, right because now, it does affect I... diplomacy if you're friends with somebody, if you're allied <laughs> with people that your factions don't like. 
I, uh, oh, yeah. I just... I just gave this rundown last turn, but I guess I wasn't phrasing it clearly enough. Right now, this lobby is technically a free-for-all as far as the game is concerned. Because it's a free -for -all. You, your faction hated mine and it would mess up your... Demise. No, no, no. It has nothing to, has nothing to do with faction choices. It's, oh, okay. the game's The game's considered a free-for-all because I set it to free-for-all, and then the ability to establish alliances and trade is up to us to do however we want. Um, alternatively, I could have just told the game, actually, this isn't a free-for-all, it's team one versus team two, and I could tell the game specifically, like these three are on that team, and these three are on that team. And if we did it that way, then the second the game starts, we are automatically locked into an alliance with each other uh, right from the get go. I just, I don't like doing that because it has diplomatic drawbacks. Some factions, when they ally with each other, um, especially diplomacy reliant factions, like say the empire. Mm -hmm. um, like if I were playing the empire and you decided to play Norska, and we were allied, all the other Empire factions would hate me because they'd be like, why are you why are you running around with Wolfric? He's a terrible person and so are you. And I wouldn't be able to sign trade agreements or alliances with anybody. Oh man, not being able to sign trade agreements. That sounds awful. I'm giving you a hard time. <laughs> I mean, you're the one who shot yourself in the foot. No, 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 no. Again, again, you're, you're confusing cause and effect. I was able to make one trade agreement by like turn 20. Then I shot myself in the foot. Nice. First there was no trade, then there was one foot. Have you ever done a um, multiplayer Warhammer thing with a theme of like uh, like one whole team of one race versus one whole team of another race? No, because that that usually has more that usually has more uh, cons than pros. Ah, I was just spitballing. I thought it might be fun. Uh, we, we we have done things like order versus chaos before, so it's like. You know, three lawful factions versus three evil factions. We, we can do themed fights like that. But um, the races often interact with each other in different ways that it can be very counterproductive to have everybody playing the same ones. Also, it just means less variety. Like, why would we want three people playing lizards when we could have lizards and empire and ogres all on the same team, you know? I mean, I've never seen ogres in this game in 10 hours. I don't even know if we have any. <laughs> it is what it is. Chat, I do not know why this guy had so little movement. Didn't, on the previous turn, this guy ended right here? But he was only able to move that far, and he ran out of movement, chat. I don't know why. Okay, this area has Skaven Corruption, which is getting cleaned up. Oh, hold on a sec. Uh... Okay. Um, if you decline, they pay the decline war. Okay, anyway, I don't know why this guy's out of movement. I swear on the previous turn, this guy took this city. And on this turn, he gained enough movement to move that much. So I'm just like, what? Here's an another random fun fact that I enjoy about Nakai uh, after he's out of his awful, awful early game is um, mm -hmm. when he takes a city, you know, he technically doesn't keep it. He, like, gives it to a vassal and then just moves on with his life. So mm -hmm. when he takes a city, it doesn't end his movement. So, God, yes, keep going with the reasons to ban him. Go, <laughs> keep, no, keep stop, going. wait. <laughs> keep going. So, like, you might take a town and be able to just move a little bit more afterward. Yes, another Which, as I understand it, is how corn works, but I've never played corn. Uh, corn, corn, you literally just burn the city to the ground and keep walking. His boots were made for it. 
Because Corn has a passive where his followers will, there's like an RNG chance that they move into a rune and just build it on their own. So you literally just leave burning rubble everywhere you go and after several turns, eventually your, your cultists will like rebuild it for you. We did, uh, we did a campaign not too long ago when I played Scarbrand and Chat, where's this he from? has Ooh. this mechanic where he gets movement back after he burns down a city. And then there's a, um, a right you can activate that like doubles the effectiveness of that trait for one turn or two turns. No, it's just one turn. So if you get yourself into position properly, you can like burn down a city and then it completely refills your movement meter and you run to another city. So I burnt down 35 cities in one turn and made 180,000. I saw a YouTube video of someone that was playing Scarbrand and on turn eight, he had a campaign victory. Um, that video he, is what gave me the idea. I just mimicked it, yeah. it. I just mimicked it in a multiplayer campaign as closely as I could. Question, maybe Bomb just knows the answer to this. I've Half of my research tree, I cannot access because it says I require a scrying pool and I am looking yeah. at my building menu. I can't find it. I think it's minor settlements only. Okay. Like a tier three. I think. Yeah, it's a tier three building. It looks like a little like well. It's kind of near your walls, wall buildings. Okay. As soon as we get out of this pop up, I'll uh, look at a minor settlement. I'm looking at a capital right now. So weird to have a tech that is required only in a minor settlement. Ah. Yeah, you're right. It requires a tier three minor settlement, and I have none of those. That's why I can't do research. Okay. So I'll upgrade that one. Okay, six turns. Yeah, despite being the same race, uh, Nakai's research tree is completely different from this one. True. Borax is also different. Which uh, one is different? Borax? At least the order it lets you research is, is different. Gotcha. Yeah, that's because each each Lizardman starts with different buildings, which uh, will unlock different starting uh, techs. Each non Nakai Lizardman, I should say. By purple sail. Nikai's my favorite. He's so cute. Wait, I can get Imperial Supply in the water? Instant boats. <laughs> Just put out into a boat, spawn a 20 stack. Like, did you see the DM I sent? Um, hang on. Yes, I, I see it. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, hang on, chat. Let me uh, let me finish this turn, and then uh, I'll catch up on the chat. I see there's a few messages waiting on me. My visions predict failure. I still need growth buildings? Yeah, I guess I do. Okay, I want to get that by the time we fight for Bretonia, so I'll start with that upgrade. Sneak Priest, that's upgrading.
Not sure if I should spend on that. Because that's just an increase of 50 gold. 